What is the benefit of praising Allah upon all conditions? It is that on the day of judgment, you will be called out as a VVIP, very, very important person. Why? Allah says, I created you, I chose for you, I decreed for you, I did things that you liked and things you didn't like, but you always praised me. Come into Jannah. That's it. Subhanallah. You understood me. You recognized me. And that's why I started off by saying Islam is the five pillars. Iman is the six pillars. Ihsan is a level higher. And ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tarahu fa illam takun tarahu fa inna hu yarak. Ihsan is a level higher than Islam and Iman. It means when you're worshipping Allah, you're worshipping as though you can see Allah, you can visualize, you can visualize as though you are in front of Allah. But if you cannot do that, the same hadith says, at least know that Allah is watching you. So these are the levels. There's a level of Ihsan and there is a level higher than that. What is the highest level of closeness to Allah? Do you know? Have you thought about it? Have you been told? Have you been taught? Did you dig it up and check? I can tell it to you now. It's called a riba bil qada. To be happy at the decree of Allah. Then you've arrived at a level higher than the rest of the people. A riba bil qada. When you say the term Radi, Radi means to be happy, to be okay. I might not be excited with the fact that someone passed away, but I'm happy with the decree of Allah. I'm sad at the fact that as a human being, I'm going to miss my husband or my wife or my child or my brother or my parent. As a human being, I, I will cry. It's normal to cry. It's good to shed tears. It's very healthy to shed tears. Even as a believing female or a male, it does not mean that your Iman is weak because you are crying. Not at all. You're allowed to cry. The Prophet ﷺ shed tears upon the loss of Ibrahim, his son. And when he was asked, what is this O Messenger? He says, Innama hiya rahmatun ja'alaha Allahu fi ibadihi ruhama. This is a mercy that Allah has placed in the hearts of those who are merciful. I'm not crying because I'm questioning the decree of Allah. This is my son. I'm crying because we are going to be separated for a short time. That's the reason. I'm going to miss him, in other words. Inna, he said, the Prophet says, and we are saddened at the separation from you, O Ibrahim, addressing his son, who had just passed away in, in his infancy. Subhanallah. So, my beloved sisters, take it in your stride. The only thing that's going to bring comfort to your heart. The only thing is the remembrance of Allah. There's nothing else that can bring comfort to your heart besides the remembrance of Allah and the gifts that Allah bestows upon you. Things could have been worse, like I said. So what is the remembrance of Allah? Normally when we say dhikr of Allah, we tend to forget that afdalu dhikri tilawatul Qur'an. The best of dhikr is the recitation of the Quran. I've been promoting a challenge to say, start your day with a few words of the Quran. Start your day with one verse of the Quran. See how your life changes. Start your day with five minutes of the Quran, 10 minutes of the Quran. Notice I'm not telling you how many pages. I'm telling you how many minutes because time is precious. But trust me, the word of Allah is the most precious. There is no gift that you can give yourself better than the recitation of the word of Allah and getting close to Allah. There's no gift better than that. Nothing will bring you contentment. No amount of wealth, no amount of material items, no motor vehicles, no perfumes, no makeup, no whatever fashion of clothing. Nothing will bring you true contentment besides your relationship with Allah. And I swear this, by he who raised the skies without pillars. There's no chance that you can achieve contentment except through the remembrance of Allah and your relationship with Allah. When it improves, you will have contentment, you will be happy.
When we are young, we are bubbling with energies and so on. We tend to focus on the wrong things. Those things that are giving you temporary pleasure, these, those are the very things that will bring about sadness and hurt to your heart because you've given your heart in the wrong cause. You donated your heart to something material. It became more important to you than Allah. That is why the struggle. So make Allah the most important in your life. See what happens. Those who believe their hearts are calmed only by the remembrance of Allah for indeed it is only the remembrance of Allah that calms the heart that gives it comfort that gives it contentment no matter what you've suffered. I had a brother recently who lost in a fire an entire warehouse. When they informed him of it, he said, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, amazing, amazing, Alhamdulillah, our Iman is intact, Subhanallah, we are still free to worship Allah, Alhamdulillah, we still have family around us, Alhamdulillah, we still have opportunities to worship Allah, Alhamdulillah. People used to brag about how much they have. People used to brag about how many things they have, how much wealth they've accumulated and so on. Allah revealed verses saying, tell them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is the grace of Allah and His virtue upon you that should be the real source of your happiness. When Allah has allowed you to read Salatul Fajr, thank Him by saying, Oh Allah, I thank you for accepting me to put my head on the ground for you. When Allah has allowed you to witness all your five Salah in the day and fulfill it, Thank Allah to say, Oh Allah, I thank you for having allowed me to put my head on the ground for you longer, in a better way, with warm tears. Oh Allah, the loss that I have suffered, you are the one who is the owner of my heart. Make it easy for me. Continue repeating a dua like a nagging person because Allah loves those who nag when it comes to dua. He loves repetition. Again and again and again, same thing again and again. Humankind doesn't like it when you ask them more than once or twice or a few times, they'll get irritated. But Allah loves it. Allah loves you to repeat again, again. You are showing your helplessness to Allah. Display it. Whatever you do, don't sin, don't transgress. And if you have fallen because you're a human being, turn back to Allah in istighfar and don't lose hope in His mercy. I repeat that. When you have fallen because you're a human being, and if you've fallen because you're a human being, remember one thing. Turn back to Allah through istighfar and don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. When Allah has placed you in a certain situation of hardship, that is your test. That is your test. You can never tell the examiner this question is unacceptable. You might find it a little bit difficult, but with the help of Allah, nothing is difficult. Look at the Prophet ﷺ when they first revealed to him, when Allah revealed to him, Iqara. What did he say? Ma ana biqari. He was told, read. He just politely responded, I'm not a qari, not a reader. Iqara. Again, I'm not a reader. Ma ana biqari. Guess what he was told after that? Verses were revealed. Read in the name of your Lord who created. What does that mean? That means if you think you cannot do something, you read in the name of your Lord. The minute you take the name of Allah, you are able to do it. It will become easy for you. 
That's why as Muslims, what do what are we taught? We're taught that everything you do, say Bismillah. Bismillah. Before you eat, Bismillah. You open the door of the motor vehicle, Bismillah. You go somewhere, you do something, Bismillah. Why? Because it is only with the name of Allah that everything is made easy. And with the same name of Allah, nobody can harm you. Nothing can hurt you. Nothing in the heavens or the earth, in the skies, should I say, or the earth can ever harm you. Bismillah. الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم. I take the name of Allah with whose name or in the skies and He is all hearing, all knowing. That's a powerful du'a.